My name is Kathy H. I'm 28 years old. These days I spend most of my time not looking forwards, but looking back to what happened to us. Me, Tommy, and Ruth. Students of Hailsham are special. None of you will do anything except live the life that has already been set up for you. We all decided that we wanted it to be a strange world. And I think that this is a dystopian story, absolutely. And yes, you have to go with that. But I think essentially the film, it, it's, it's a love story. It's a story about friendship. Um, and I think it holds a very bleak mirror up to humanity. You will become adults, but only briefly. You have to know who you are and what you're created to do. The, the, the essential part of the story for me is, was you know, how to find a kind of way of talking about the natural human lifespan. Um, but in a very defamiliarized kind of way. What was exciting about it was how we were reflected in it, how we as a, as a race of people were reflected in it in terms of the little time that we all have and um, the choices that we make on a minute-to-minute, -minute, day day-to-day basis on how, of how we spend our time. It's, it's a film about what is important to human beings as time starts to run out. Once the truth had been revealed, it changed everything between us. I directed the film with a, a dog-eared, marked-up copy of the book in my hands every day. I would listen to the book on tape on the drive into the set of whatever scene we were shooting that day. So I took comfort in the fact that the book worked, that I, I completely invested myself and became engrossed in these characters. I fell in love with these characters in the book. What the novel, of course, did was it filled up the spaces in all of us as actors and, you know, the, well, where does that part of that person come in? And, it's, and you go to page 42 and you go, oh, that's exactly what that part... But for me it was interesting because it was all from... The novel is all from Kathy's perspective, from, from Carrie's character's perspective. Kathy was the part I wanted to play. I always loved her. And, um, and you know, the book was just... was so... Uh, so moving and, and without sentimentality and that's what's so amazing about him is he doesn't write sort of he doesn't manipulate you into feeling things he just writes and you feel um so i, I loved it ruth why do you do that thing squeezing tommy's shoulder i'm allowed to touch tommy aren't i it's the way you're touching him you know what i mean it's copied from that television show that's so don't not tell me that's so not true well, that behaviour, that's not what people do out there in real life, if that's what you were thinking. Oh, Kathy, You don't like the fact that Tommy and I are friends with Chrissy and Rod, whereas you hardly speak to anyone. No, you're not right. So not right? Well, I think we, we kind of explored the idea of, of these people that have been institutionalised, you know, and, and have um, grown up in a very specific world and a very protected world and not necessarily, well, never having been allowed out of it. So that idea of we, we wanted there to be a strangeness, but equally not a strangeness where you'd go, oh, they're not human, kind of w we went with a, an innocent line. You know, these are people that have grown up in this school and they've never been allowed out and they've been given very specific views of the outside world and how exactly that would shape you. So, exactly how much experience have you guys had with the outside? Quite a lot. No, we haven't. We did a lot of role-playing exercises at Halsham. They don't count. OK, well, don't feel scared, OK? There's really, there's nothing to it. We aren't scared. They've never been offered love from any kind of parental source and, and, and how that would change things. And for my character in particular, I think I, I play a very, very difficult woman um, who's not particularly nice and, and kind of trying to look into the background and, and how she grew up into trying to solve why she isn't nice and why she behaves in the way that she does. And now you think that you and Tommy would have made a more natural couple. You see, the thing is, although Tommy really likes you as a friend, he just doesn't see you that way. 
Cathy is so afraid of upsetting the balance. I think she'd rather be discontent and with them than than alone. So she, you know, part of the reason she never pushes for Tommy or, or you know, confronts Ruth is because this balance is so... These two people are the only people she has in the world for her whole life. And to upset them and to lose them is just too much of a risk. Tommy and Ruth were together for the remainder of our time at school. I kept hoping they would separate. They never did. I could see some parallels, you know, between my writing and what's happening on the screen. Um, and uh, one thing that struck me was, um, was, the, was the acting. I thought the acting was remarkable, and, and it's an incredible showcase for, I think, for the younger generation of British actors. I don't know if it's something intrinsic to their style or something they do in this film, but over and over again, the, the words that will come out of their mouths will be at odds with what their face or their body was saying. You know, often the words themselves were almost like a cover or uh, a way of kind of... It was almost a deception or, or a way of covering up an embarrassment. And their, their true emotion will be revealed non-verbally through the acting. And I thought that was almost like a direct parallel to, to the way... Madame? I, I, I often use language in, in my novels. Sorry. We didn't mean to startle you. The actor's job isn't to worry about the the um, the orchestra. The actor's job is to worry about their own instrument, um, and you have to trust that the person who's conducting is going to bring bring you up when necessary, and then chill you out most of the time. I'm a big believer in, um, and it's worked so far pretty well. And I've only made the two films. In I create a world. We all agree on the tone of it. Uh, we agree on what's important. We um, and then I. There's not a lot of discussion on the set. I let the actors have their freedom to do their own creative expression in their field, their area, which is, is, is creating these little works of art out of these characterizations, which I think they've done an amazing job doing in this film. Kathy, what are you looking for? What do you mean? I'm just looking at dirty pictures. If it's just for kicks, then you, you, don't, you don't do it like that. You need to look at each picture more carefully. Nothing, nothing really happens if you go that fast. How do you know what works for girls? We are dealing with an alternative reality, and and so so it, it kind of gives you actually quite a lot of freedom. But we decided that you wanted to constantly keep that strangeness intact. Um, so we put a lid on it, which I think, we, you know, which, which was a really interesting exercise because normally you can just ball and you let everything out, but this was about something else. It's about, again, acceptance and, and, and containment and, and the characters are contained, you know, they're, they're imprisoned. And I think in a funny kind of way, therefore, they, they can't emote in the way that we would be able to emote. We were quite strict with each other in terms of not being three crying 20-somethings in a film. For th you know, So Andrew and I, especially because we had more to do with each other, would always be like, you're not going to cry in this, are you? Because if you, if you cry, <laughs> you know, and if you dropped a tear, I'd be like, Andrew, you know, because it was all so held all the time. But, yeah, we kind of watched that, and Mark just let us do our thing. He was great. I think a part of the story is suppression. A lot, a lot of... A lot of... A big theme is how we, as human beings, are constantly avoiding um, facing the terrifying fact of existence. Um, so that release of emotion is not allowed. It doesn't feel like we're allowed to, because we've been we've been told from a very early age what our, what our purpose is. We've been told what we've been made for, um, and we are. It's it's deeply ingrained in us to to look after our bodies and submit to our fate. If there was a boy and a girl, and they were properly in love and they could prove it, then they would be given a few years together. Kazuo's novel is that very, very beautiful and tender thing. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, we've, we, we worked very hard to create a film that was um, honouring that. But um, you just have to let it go, and you have to let people take from it what they will and, and not, take, not, not really worry about it, really, and, and hope and assume if you've, if you've done your job for you, in a way that you're proud of, then hopefully someone else will respond as well. It had never occurred to me that our lives, which had been so closely interwoven, could unravel with such speed. I think, you know, this is my prediction, that in years to come we'll look back on this film and it would be like The Magnificent Seven. People will say, you know, oh, that's, that's when all those, these great actors were, you know, appeared together. Yeah, early in their careers. Maybe 
maybe none of us really understand what we've lived through or feel we've had enough time.